today's episode of PJ and the Beard, we're going to look at an offering from a company that we have not had an experience with yet. But before I get into that, I'd like to ask you to consider subscribing to the channel, clicking on the notification bell. Your interaction with us helps us interact with great people in the industry, in this case, Universal Audio, through our friends at Zounds. And right. the Beard's going to tell you what we have here. Right. So Zounds sent us over the Astra modulation, mach modulation machine. And a machine it is. <laughs> from Universal Audio. Uh, yeah, this is great. Thanks for watching. Good night, everybody. <laughs> so, yeah, let's jump into it really quick. So basically, face value here, uh, we have a chorus brigade, a flanger, um, and a trim. If you register the pedal, you add a phase 90 to it. You add another um, harmonic trim. Harmonic trim. Which, because this is on loan, we didn't do that. But the videos right. I watched about the harmonic trim. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we thought about it, but we figured that wouldn't be fair. Um, stereo ins and outs. Just thought I'd throw that out. So, what's really interesting about this pedal is you have a speed, a depth, and intensity, and they make sense, but. Um, they don't always work the way you would think they would work. For example, if you're on the chorus brigade, which is like an old CE2 boss chorus, that only had one knob. So the, I think it's the depth and the speed don't do anything. Right. They don't work. They're not doing nothing. And it's just the intensity. So they've kind of paired it to things, right? Um, down at the bottom, you have a shade, a shape, and a mode. Right, the mode is just a two-click thing. So depending on which one you're in, if you're in flanger, you get your traditional flanger. If you move that down, you go to the doubler, I think, right? Your one was an inverted. Oh, maybe it was inverted. I, yeah. You gotta read the manual right. for this one. Uh, uh, Universal Audio on their web, on their YouTube page mm -hmm. has some, they take each mode uh, and they break each mode down. They do a really, really nice job if you want to figure out what the controls do and how to really kind of dial that in. Uh, there's a store button in the middle. So if you get a setting you like, you store that, you hold that down for so long, it stores it, and then that becomes tied to this. So really easy to set one up and store one, and now you have on your board two different effects that you can switch back and forth between. Um, yeah, so for example, like in, in Tremolo, Shade becomes... Uh, your volume, I believe. So mm -hmm. you can drive it a little bit with that. So they do different things depending on which one you're in. So I can't express this enough. You got to check right. the manual out or you got to do some research. Don't just plug it in and start turning stuff. Um, uh, of note, if I was turning speed in chorus where it doesn't do anything, this light would flash really fast, fast and tell you. Like, hey, look at me. You're not doing anything. Yeah, you're not doing anything. <laughs> so that's that's worth noting. Uh, there's also an A-B toggle, and then that can switch some modes and some stuff, too. All right. So we'll give you a hint on this as we go. Um, first clip. Start out with chorus. Yeah. Because I think I'm the one that's like, let's get another modulation in. So I uh, went to the chorus, <laughs> and we're running stereo through the Tyler JT-22 and the Fender Hot Rod Deluxe. And the mode that we picked on there, you can go between a dry amp and a wet amp or both wet. This one I selected was both wet. It was stereo coming out of both sides. And this is what I played. So for my first clip, I also, you know, did a course, um, and we're discussing it in between here. Like we think it is a CE one. I think maybe I said CE two, but so I did the CE one, just the knob setting the course, but I took it to the mode that's more traditional stereo, which sends out a clean signal, one amp, 
So the Tyler, I believe it was. Right. So probably your right ear is the clean signal and then sends out the course, the affected signal to the other amp, which gives, you know, I, I like that. And so a lot of times when I'm using chorus, it's just like chugging some chords or something mm -hmm. like that. So um, I tried to show you that using this fine guitar here. This is a Supro Hampton and it's about time it came off the wall again <laughs> for a little bit. All right, so coming out of that, but not leaving that modulation piece, if you switch the toggle down to B, you go into vibrato. Now, the interesting thing is in the side discussion we had is so the vibrato can also use the traditional or the dual. So a vibrato is a completely wet signal. When you play a vibrato, there's no clean signal in there at all. It's all affected signal. So the first setting I did was the traditional, which means you had a clean setting in the Tyler and the affected vibrato got sent to the the fender. And then as I was playing that, I, I played the same thing again, <clears throat> excuse me, and I flipped it over to where you had the vibrato in both. So our question was, if you're playing a vibrato and you have a clean signal blended in, is it a chorus? <laughs> you decide. <laughs> All right, so moving on to one of the other modulations that lives inside the Astra, it is the flanger. And I uh, had it in its uh, standard mode, and I thought, well, geez, why not grab a Les Paul and grab a Barber Electronics Direct Drive, put a little stank on it, and I played this. When it came my turn to look at the flanger mode, I had watched the, the UA's video on this, mm -hmm. which I highly recommend going and watch those if you're, if you're thinking about setting this up. So one of the modes, you have the regular flanger mode, but then you have what's called the doubler mode. Uh, and when you do that, you kind of take out, I, I think it was um, the intensity maybe that we turned all the way down to zero. You'll see where the knobs are, but you're kind of taking out the flanger and just trying to use it to double your signal a little bit, which sounded really cool. So I had the SG Junior plugged into the Barber Electronics Direct Drive. So you first hear it, it's just the Junior into the Direct Drive, at no delay. And then we kick on the Astra and you hear that. It's almost like a, 
kind of slapbackish, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it just doubles things up. It's a really cool sound. So check that out. So moving on to another uh, feature there in the Astra, it is the tremolo, which we did a series on. And so I had it set to a very traditional classic tremolo. I played the uh, PRS SE Paul's guitar. And I believe I had an echo, I had the delay on. Any, any delay you hear tonight is from the DLS Echo Tour and it all went into both of those amps and it sounded really nice like this. <laughs> Before I jump into my tremolo clip, you're right, stereo and everything except for that SG Junior and the doubler. That was just one amp because mm-hmm. we wanted to hear really what that. Anyway, uh, sounded like through one amp. Paul's guitar too for the tremolo. I don't know how that happened because I literally the first clip I did was that, and the last clip you and we both <laughs> ended up here for tremolo. So uh, my tremolo clip, I put a li- we saw that Barber Electronics direct drive down into that put some dirt on it and then i flipped it down to the to the stereo like where it's going to hard pan them so you should be hearing this bouncing back and forth between your ears uh really cool uh really liked it so it sounds a little bit like this thing happening here tonight is that we didn't get to try out the, the phaser or the, the harmonic trim but we did both got to take shots at the other ones uh final thought time i think pat well it, my first experience uh with universal audio and it, it really started by seeing the oxbox show up everywhere and then i think tour from tc went over to universal audio and guess what they started to do they did pedals and there's a number in this form factor in this series, but obviously because we've done modulation, we want to get this in and it really didn't disappoint at all. Yep. It, it is a great uh, sounding pedal. Um, again, not owning this pedal, we didn't dive in and register it and look at all of the online features that you can dive in, but the types of players we are as a standalone pedal that sits on your board, I thought it sounded great. Um, I, I do like the fact that it is kind of two pedals in one. It's got a bunch of other things, but you literally can have two pedals in one so if you find something you know for me maybe it's the chorus and the tremolo i find those that i really like and i could just toggle between the two be a pretty powerful piece to have on your board it is a a 399 price point i mean it's a little pricey but it's a lot and it's well built 
at the time of this recording, I think Zounds has one on sale on their website. Mm-hmm. You'll have to go see if it's still there. But I, I really liked it. It did not disappoint by any means. Uh, <clears throat> built like a tank. It's solid. I loved it. All right. Uh, I don't know why. You have to. Let me see this. Yeah. That's you have to hold it for final thoughts. Yeah, you do. And Well, first of all, show the angle. It's slightly angled. The form factor is like pointed up. So in, a, in an age where multi-effects pedals <laughs> come with deep dives into MIDI control and everything else, and I, I understand that there's somebody that said, why didn't they put MIDI in there? You know, and I might even have thought that at first tonight, and then as I thought about it, you get three really powerful, good sounding effects of which you can access two on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it's not, a, I mean, we're not talking, it's not a mini pedal, right? I mean, it's, it, it takes up some room, but it doesn't take up as much room as putting a really good tremolo and a really good chorus pedal on your board. In fact, this is smaller than some of the tremolos and chorus pedals that we use. True. So, True. Uh, and that's all they do. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I, th- I think that's where I've kind of landed is I like pedals that are sometimes where less is more, right? Mm-hmm. I can just dial up a good tremolo. I can dial up a good chorus. I can dial up a good... I mean, when it comes down to the chorus on this is one knob. Right, right. That's when you flip that thing to chorus mm-hmm. and you're not running it in stereo, you're one knob in it. Mm-hmm. So, well done. I, I think. Uh, first experience with Universal Audio. Looking forward to checking out some more stuff from them uh, sometime in the future. So I think we always take a minute to pause and just say, hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for clicking the subscribe button, hitting the notification bell, all that jazz, because that interaction, when you interact with us, that's what allows us to form relationships with people like Zounds and other people to bring cool stuff in to share with you. So it helps keep us going, and we appreciate that. And with that, I'm PJ on behalf of The Beard, reminding no matter what you hear, you never have too much gear. Thank you.